Thank you for having me today. It's a great pleasure to be here. I wish I could be there in person. I deeply respect the work that Interopen is doing and, uh, and hope uh, my comments are useful to you. Uh, I'm going to talk about the role of electronic health records and with a particular focus on interoperability. I'll give you an American perspective and then spend a little bit of time at the end talking about what I came to learn about the National Health Service and, uh, and the English perspective from my work there over the last couple of years. Uh, we've gone through a period over the last several years in the United States where we've essentially gone from analog to digital. Here you see digital adoption rates in, in hospitals in the United States. As you see in 2008, only about 10% uh, of American hospitals had electronic health records. By last year, two years ago, up to 83%. Uh, last year, new data just came out. We're up over 90%. So it's not hyperbolic to say that really in the space of about seven years, we've gone from primarily a paper-based industry to primarily a digital industry. Uh, what did this? The main thing in the United States was about $30 billion of federal incentive payments that were paid out to doctors' offices and hospitals to get us to digitize from uh, 2010 to 2015, uh, and it worked. It got us to all digitize. Unfortunately, uh, many of us bought different systems, and they don't talk to each other very well, and so we're having some of the same interoperability problems that uh, you are having across the pond. Uh, my view of healthcare, not just in the United States, but generally, is that we're in the midst of two transformational trends. Uh, the first is that we're all under pressure to deliver high-value care, better, safer, more satisfying, more accessible at a lower cost. Uh, certainly, you're feeling the pressures acutely. So are we in the United States. The second is, as I've said, in the U.S. at least, we've gone from paper to digital in the last few years. You've certainly done that in the GP sector, have not really done that at the scale that we have in the uh, trusts yet, but you will. Uh, if you ask me today, in my job as chair of a large department of medicine, uh, what the biggest issue in my life is, the biggest issue is uh, how do we deliver better care, safer care, less expensive care. If you ask me 10 years from now or eight years from now what the biggest issue will have been, I'm guessing it's going to be digital. And why do I say that? Because if we look at every other industry, 10 or 15 years after they digitized, the industry is turned upside down. Obviously, the taxi cab industry doesn't look the same anymore with Uber. The uh, retail industry doesn't look the same uh, with Amazon, the hotel industry with Airbnb. And you, you can go on and, uh, and, and fill in the blanks with virtually every industry. I think we're going to see the same kind of transformation in healthcare once we are fully digital and once all the pieces are connected. Uh, the pieces being connected turns out to be an extraordinarily important uh, factor in getting it right, and that's why uh, the work of Interopen and the work you're all doing is so crucial. The way I see it is health IT has four stages. The first is digitizing the clinical record, and that's what we've done in the last few years. That's what you're in the process of doing in the trust in the UK, and you've already done in the GP sector. The second is what you're thinking about here at the conference, which is connecting all of the parts. That's the trust system, one trust system to another trust system, a trust system to a GP system. That's third-party apps like Fitbits or glucometers connecting to the enterprise systems. And that's uh, patient-facing systems to one another and to the enterprise systems, basically creating a digital ecosystem where all the data flows seamlessly through all of the parts. The third, which really only flows uh, from, from one and two being in place. The third is gleaning meaningful insights from all the data, actually trying to figure out who's at risk for what, uh, which patient is likely to become septic, likely to be require admission or readmission, gleaning meaningful insights from the data. The fourth, which I think is the hardest one, is converting these insights into action that actually improves quality, safety, patient experience, access, and costs and efficiency. Uh, where are we in healthcare? Well, we've done one, at least in the US, you're, you're in the process of doing number one in the UK and the trusts. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Uh, we're just beginning to do two, and that's why your work is so important. We're certainly not there. Uh, we're just beginning to do number three of, uh, as we talk about big data and, uh, and, and, and trying to understand uh, more about patients and our systems of care from the data. And we've gotten four mostly wrong, and we've certainly not begun to do this in any kind of a uh, serious and systematic way. So where are we in health IT? We're really, really just at the beginning. And number two, connecting the parts, which is what you're talking about, is an absolutely crucial piece of the puzzle. 
when things really get interesting, I, I liken this to the building of the Transcontinental Railroad in the U.S., where you had two separate sets of tracks coming out from our two coasts, and eventually they they uh, they they uh, got connected. And that's when things really got interesting in uh, in travel, and where things will really get interesting in health IT. I say one set of tracks, at least in the U.S., is building traditional electronic health records, Epic Cerner, you name it, again, you're doing that now in the trust, that digitize the hospital or digitize the, the, uh, the GP uh, office. That's happening, that's one set of tracks. The second set of tracks, though, will turn out to be every bit as important, and I'm seeing it because I live in Silicon Valley. Now, because the first part is digital, you now have the uh, Apples of the world, the Facebooks, the Googles, uh, the IBMs jumping into health IT because they now know there's digital data that they can do their, uh, their thing with. In addition, you have consumer-facing IT, uh, apps, sensors, uh, uh, data coming from patients themselves. Right now, that world does not connect at all to the world of your hospital Cerner system, let's say. Ultimately, of course, what you're doing here and what's so crucial is someone will lay the golden spike, all the data will flow seamlessly through all these systems, and that's when the magic really happens. Now, I wrote a book uh, a year and a half ago about health IT, and it was a somewhat pessimistic and critical book because we have not gotten it right. And uh, so the question is, what could possibly go wrong as we digitize our health systems? Well, I'll give you an example. I don't have time to talk in great detail about this, but here's one thing that was evidence of what had gone wrong. This was an advertisement I found for an, an emergency medicine job in our state of Arizona. And it started off saying this Arizona General Hospital is coming to Arizona. It's located in a Phoenix suburb. It's a, a relatively small, uh, what they call boutique general hospital. And here's when they started the advertisement for, remember, an emergency room doctor. What do they have? They have an emergency room, which is, you want that if you're hiring an emergency room doctor. They have a radiology suite with the latest gizmos. They have a small, a small hospital, two state-of-the-art operating rooms, outpatient surgery, a small number of inpatient rooms, a little tiny place. But the only part of the advertisement that was in bold, it was clearly their main selling point, was they have no electronic medical record. So we have seen in the United States increases in rates of physician burnout, uh, much of this attributable to electronic health records, the amount of time that doctors and nurses are spending on data entry, problems in the workflow. Uh, we have not gotten it right, in part because we digitize the system without thinking about the people and their work in a deep enough way. What have I come to learn about health IT and what we need to do in order to get it right? The first is thinking about IT as adaptive rather than technical change. Ron Heifetz, a professor at Harvard, talks about two kinds of changes in, in work and in the world, adaptive versus technical change. Technical changes tend to be straightforward. You follow a recipe, you follow a cookbook, and, and it's all fine. Though, on the other hand, adaptive problems, as he says, are those that require people themselves to change. In adaptive problems, the people are the problem and the people are the solution. And leadership is about mobilizing and engaging the people with the problem rather than trying to anesthetize them so you can go off and solve it on your own. We treated health IT as a technical problem. It is the mother of all adaptive problems. And that's partly why we got it wrong. We didn't think about the importance of the people. Rather, we put in the technology systems and said, okay, let's see how things work. And lo and behold, they don't work very well because we have not understood the connection between the technology and the people. That is incredibly important to get right. The second thing I think we got wrong, but in some ways getting wrong mostly was not understanding and predicting this, is something known as the productivity paradox of information technology, a term coined by MIT professor Eric Bernjofsen now uh, uh, 20, 25 years ago. Bernjofsen observed that in industry after industry that went digital, there were high hopes that we'd bring in computers, we'd go digital, and it would lead to massive improvements in quality and efficiency that would occur within 10 minutes of turning on the switch. Well, lo and behold, the technology came in and the improvements were elusive. And people kind of scratch their head, and what's going on here? Why are we not seeing these major improvements in quality and efficiency and safety? In fact, this wonderful quote from a Nobel Prize winning economist from 1986, thinking about technologies that entered industries like manufacturing and financial services, he said, you can see the, pro the computer age everywhere except in the productivity statistics. They did not see the promised benefits. Well, fast forward 10 or 15 years later, you do see the benefits. Look at 
manufacturing, travel, uh, retail. You see massive benefits from information technology, but it tends to take 10 or 15 years to see those benefits. When looked through at, at, at health, looking at healthcare through that lens, it's not that surprising that we've not seen massive gains in productivity or quality yet, because we're still really in our first few years of becoming a primarily digital industry. Bernjofsen and others have studied industries as they went through this evolution, and they came to recognize that there are two keys for unlocking the productivity paradox, for fixing it and seeing the benefits that they hoped for in the beginning. The first is obviously the technology needs to get better, and clearly that is true in healthcare. When you look at enterprise IT systems, you realize that they're not very good or very slick. But the second turns out to be more important. The second is reimagining the work itself. In the beginning, our tendency is to put in the technology and replicate the way we did the thing when we were using paper. You know, in, in a paper chart, there was a note about a patient written by a doctor on a piece of paper, and under a separate tab, a note written about the patient by a nurse. And that's the way it work, worked. And so when we digitized, what did we do? We created electronic tabs, and we created electronic pieces of paper. Of course, a young person, digitally savvy, savvy person, comes in and says, why are you doing that way? Have you ever seen a Facebook? wall or a Twitter uh, feed or a Wikipedia page and, and collaborative charting. That's the sort of thinking that involves reimagining the work, saying, well, now we have these digital tools. Why are we doing it this old way? Let's do it a brand new way. When you begin to do that, that's when you start seeing the massive advantages that were anticipated in the beginning. But it takes time. It takes a culture that allows for reimagining the work. It takes people that understand the work and also understand the technology. That turned out to be a very important insight that helped inform uh, a report that I was privileged to edit last year uh, called Making IT Work, Harnessing the Power of Health IT to Improve Care in England. Uh, Secretary of State for Health, uh, Jeremy Hunt, asked me to chair a, uh, a group that spent close to a year uh, thinking hard about this, thinking of hard about how to get digital right in the trust, largely in, in NHS England. The group was spectacular. You can read the report and see the people uh, in, in, uh, through this link uh, or just searching on the web. Uh, here were our main recommendations. I'll highlight them as a, at a very high level, uh, but I think they will come up throughout your deliberations in the conference. Uh, we thought implementation had to move at the appropriate speed and not too fast. As you know, uh, Secretary Hunt was talking about uh, paperless by 2018. Uh, later paperless by 2020. Uh, we recommended that that's too fast, that we would not get it right if we went that fast, and ultimately recommended a staged approach uh, with ultimately the goal being paperless by 2023. We also recommended that there were certain trusts that were already quite good, and they should be made global exemplars, given additional funding to become world class. And uh, we were pleased that that recommendation was taken up, as you, as you know. Uh, we thought it was important to give local trust the authority and the resources to buy the best system for them. As you know, one of the reasons that NP Fit uh, did not achieve its goals and, and burned through a lot of money uh, without achieving widespread uh, digitization of the NHS was that they tried to centralize the purchasing of IT systems for trusts around the country. We thought it was important to, uh, to not do that, but rather to do something that more resembled what we did in the states, which is federal money that allowed hospitals to buy whatever system they thought would meet their needs as long as they met certain federal standards. We thought it was vitally important to build and nurture a robust clinical informatics workforce, which we did not see present in the UK, nowhere near the, uh, the, the robustness of the US workforce of physicians, nurses, pharmacists, who also have advanced informatics training. It's important to see health IT as a change management, not sim simply a technical project. And in order to get that right and get that reimagining of the work right, we thought it was absolutely crucial that you have people in the trust who understand technology and also understand and clinical practice. We have also thought there needed to be a national CCIO, someone who did understand technology and clinical practice to oversee this effort, and we were very pleased that our recommendation was taken up and Professor Keith McNeil was hired to, uh, to serve in this role. And finally, we thought interoperability was absolutely crucial to getting this right, and that's why, again, I'm so pleased to, uh, to speak to, uh, to you and your group. What do leaders need to do, just coming to the end, connect the digital pieces. Have to, we have to get that right. We have to learn to use data for improvement, build decision support to give people the information that they need to take care of patients at the point of care. 
We need to build the skills, culture, and governance to reimagine the work, which is as much about teamwork, quality improvement, and systems as IT. We're going to need new workflows, personnel, and leadership. Reimagining the work doesn't just happen. You have to have the right people and right culture to do this uh, very challenging work and retain a sense of optimism. The productivity paradox is real. And when, you, when I first read about it, I said, oh, now I get it. It doesn't feel good now because it never feels good in the first few years of going digital. But over the course of 5, 10, 15 years, I think we're, uh, we're going to get this right. And it's going to make healthcare massively better, safer, more convenient, more fun to practice medicine, nursing, pharmacy, uh, easier for patients, and ultimately less expensive as well. Let me end with this story. Uh, 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 a few decades ago uh, in, in, a, uh, in Honduras, there was a river called the Choloteca River, and they needed to build a new bridge over the river. It was a part of Honduras that gets terrible hurricanes and blows down houses all the time. So they decided to build a bridge using the best people, best materials, best computer programs. This is the bridge they built. And lo and behold, soon after the bridge went up, uh, this wonderful bridge, along came Hurricane Mitch, and it blew down everything for miles around, uh, millions and millions of dollars of damage. But the Choloteca Bridge was left standing uh, with barely a nick. And I could imagine the bridge engineers giving each other congratulations for having built this fantastic bridge. There was only one little problem, and that was that the river moved. And that's the way I think about healthcare today. The river, the river that we thought of when we all went to school or began our work in healthcare. In the US, it was seeing more patients, building bigger hospitals. That's not the river today. The river has moved, and the river today is value. And it's true in the UK, and it's true in the US. How do we deliver, how do we develop a healthcare system that delivers, predictably delivers care that's better, safer, more reliable, more satisfying, and less expensive? How do we do that? It's clear that we need to build a very, very strong bridge. And that bridge is going to be built certainly with a lot of digital components. And all of those components better be tied together or the bridge will fail. That is why the work you're doing is so important. And that's why it's such a privilege to have a chance to talk to you this morning. Thanks very much.